So I'm in a large metal outbuilding, kind of an agricultural building, and I thought I'd take the opportunity to kind of talk about commercial buildings. If you start getting a lot of uh, farm and ranch claims or commercial claims, you're going to be getting dealing with a lot of buildings like this that are made out of steel and have this one's insulated and on the outside, we'll see in a second, has uh, metal panels. But like I said, very common on commercial and farm and ranch. And again, this is a farm and ranch. This building was actually uh, belonged to the oil company, oil and gas company that came out here. I'm in the middle of absolute nowhere, Kansas. Um, and this building is sitting in the middle of a, of a field. Probably the next closest building is know, three miles away. So um, this was used for when they came up here with their trucks and everything, it's their big shop. And they built in some uh, housing quarters in here, which are real rough, but let's take a look at it. So when you're looking at a metal outbuilding like this, um, they're pretty simple to estimate. Um, I mean, the panels are pretty much the same as they are on the walls, as they are on the roof. And the only thing that you can't see from here that I'm not gonna be able to show you because I don't have a ladder to look at this, but there's a, a ridge, a metal ridge piece that runs the whole length of the building all the way down to the end. Um, it may have a vent on it, but pretty much when you write an estimate for a metal outbuilding like this, you need to take into account this end fascia and under exterior structures <clears throat> or metal uh, buildings, it'll be something different. It's not fascia like on a, a residential because it's, you know, it's probably heavier gauge steel. Um, also these corner pieces right here and then this big heavy duty downspouts. You guys can kind of see this is different than a residential downspout. I mean, it's I get my whole foot in there. Um, typically, they'll, they're going to have aluminum or vinyl windows. This one is vinyl. And usually the construction is pretty simple, so they, they're not going to have like a bunch of different kinds of windows. They'll just have maybe one or two. Like that's, that's a single hung. Uh, and then here over here is a double single hung. And then you have a couple people doors. And then in this one, we've got some great big um, agricultural, you could probably drive a tractor trailer into that thing. Um, so, also, they're gonna have a special gutter. I mean, the gutter on this one's really big. It looks like they're missing a downspout right there. But it's pretty simple. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot to it. Look at the hardest part really is probably going to be finding the garage doors in Xactimate because they're so big. I'll just show you how big they are. This is a really big building. There's my car in there, so that's a honking uh, garage door right there. And you, know, you just count them up one, two, three, four, five. And then there's two people doors on the end, and then there's a people door right there. These are powered. When you're looking at the inside of a metal building like this, first thing you might notice is that they're typically free span, <clears throat> which means that there's no collar ties, there's no joists, or not joists, but like uh, trusses or anything like that um, in the, the rafters. Um, but what you do have are these mainframe girders, right? Heavy duty. Um, I basically big I beams and then going perpendicular to those these beams are called purlins and it's P-U-R-L-I-N-S and you should be able to find those in Xactimate and really all you got to do if you have a building that's got you know maybe this whole corner was blown away or a tree landed on it or even if the whole building is gone well I guess not if the whole building is gone you just count up one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six on a side, and then multiply that by the length of the building, 
and that'll give you times two. If you needed to replace this building, that'll give you all of the purlins. And then again, with the, the main frames, you have the one on the end. So I'll start over here. The end wall has this, the main frame is the same as each one that comes after it. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total. Um, so that gets you, you know, pretty much the vast majority of um, steel in this building. And then this is insulated and you can tell because it looks like it's got like a cushion or whatever on the ceiling and on the walls. So this whole building would be insulated. So, you, you know, you'd have to estimate in for insulation. And then this one has kind of a sort of a utility wall, I guess, so that they can have sockets and stuff like that on it. There's another people door right there on the back. Um, this is the same thing, same material as what's on the outside and on the roof. So all you have to do is say, this is probably eight feet times, you know, all the way around. Obviously you're going to subtract out for these doors and really probably do it by, get the actual linear footage of that wall times its height. And that'll give you, there's a piece down there and then in the, the corner and then probably all along here and to there. Um, the only other thing you need to worry about with metal buildings like this, you just gotta double check if there's electrical or not, which this one obviously there is. Um, and you probably can count up, you know, sockets and switches and just go all the way around. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them in here and add those into your estimate and then these lights. So these are those uh, kind of, what do they call those things? Like sodium lights? I don't even know. Um, but you look around and exactimate until you find something that's, that's close to it. They're nice lights. I mean, they're, they're big. So you have one, two, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. So you got like 12, 11 or 12. You know, the only other thing probably should mention though, obviously is we got um, some purlins on the walls. These are a different size than the ones on the ceiling. So the ceiling ones are smaller than the ones that are on the walls. Um, but again, Xactimate does pretty good job with uh, metal building stuff. So you have some tall girders that go all, they're gonna go all the way to the ground behind this, st this steel wall here. And then there's probably at least one more across there. And these are these windows are boxed in with more steel. Um, and then of course there's a breaker box over there. But you know, essentially the, the best way to scope these things is to start from the outside and start at the top and work your way down and just write down what you see. So, you know, if you're on the front slope, we'll call this the front, then you'd say, you know, you've got what is that? Just guessing 28 linear feet rafter length, right? So, so then you multiply that by the length of the building. That gives you the amount of sheet metal that's on the roof of this thing on that slope. And then the back slope is going to be exactly the same. Then write down, I always write down bridge cap or ridge vent, whatever they got on there, metal. And then the fascia ends and then the gutters, the downspouts, the corners, windows, count up all the windows and doors all around. So, so you'd say the front, you've got five huge overhead doors. You've got one people door, one small window. And then on the, the right side, where we'll go around the house uh, counterclockwise. We'd have one window, one people door, another window. So you got two windows on this side. And then you just work your way around the house and you just count that stuff up. And you're gonna wanna get the measurement of, you know, from where the roof meets the wall, how tall that is on the outside. And that'll, I mean, you only really need to get that measurement once and then come on inside and do the same thing. And I'll just, 
I'll just make a list because I'm going to write an estimate for the inside. I'm not going to say like front wall, right wall, back wall, ceiling or whatever. I'm going to say, you know, there are 1,100 linear feet of heavy, you know, whatever size I-beams those are for the mainframe. There's 1,200 linear feet of these small purlins. There's 650 linear feet of these bigger purlins that are in the wall. And, you know, then this sheet metal, how many square feet of that sheet metal, I'll put a note in there. When you write your estimates, you're going to write a note for this in inside sheet metal saying, you know, this sheet, and I break it out separately, this sheet metal line item is for interior, you know, uh, you build your tree, front, right, roof, front, right, back, left on the exterior, and you put all your square footage and everything on each one of those grouping tree items, and then do interior, and then have a note with your metal, sheet metal walls, and then if you got to get in there and mess with that, I mean, that's, you could spend another hour in there, because there's there's a kitchen in there, and there's flooring, and there's, there's several bedrooms and bathrooms and stuff. So we're going to pretend like that's not there. Um, and then your installation, obviously, and just make a list. And then, boom, you're done. So the, only, the final thing in here, of course, is that they have, um, and it's not that big of a deal, because it's really, in the grand scheme of things, you're probably going to peg the policy limit on a building like this, is they have some of this... Uh, stuff that the you know it's cable cross it between the mainframes to square them up and make sure that they stay true and they're not everywhere but you you know you might want to throw in um, something in your line items for this cable and these eye bolts so there you have it it's kind of a you know quick and dirty how, how to scope a metal outbuilding especially a commercial uh, or farm ranch metal outbuilding, um, starting at the outside and working your way in. And, you know, we kind of went over what the parts of the building are and p basically how to put together your grouping tree and Xactimate. And again, I mean, this is where the search function in Xactimate works really well, especially in. I use it in Sketch because I just have my the way I have it, my thing set up. So I jump into Sketch in that search field, and I'll just start typing like Perlin or. Um, agricultural overhead door kind of thing or overhead door and it'll it'll list as soon as you type anything that that can show up in the description of that line item it'll start populating a list of things that match that so that's a good way to to kind of find where things are and then you can take make take note of you know the category code and the selector code and all that stuff so that later on you'll remember it or you can build a macro with it if you're doing a lot of farm ranch um, you know, sometimes you get storms where you're out in the countryside the whole time and everybody's got a building like this. So you're going to want a macro. Um, so it's a good time to put together a macro. Speaking of which, I could put together a macro. Maybe I'll do that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. This is Adjuster TV.